What is that? I have no idea. Hmm. You should touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. You touch it. No, you touch it. You touch it. You touch it. Fine, you can touch it. Fine, I will. Don't touch it. Okay, let's get this out of the way right now. 3D is terrifying, right? But you know what? It doesn't have to be. And to prove it, I'm going to show you step by step how I created the little sketch you saw at the beginning of this video. And it really breaks down into three simple steps. Creating a 3D object, turning a 2D piece of footage into a 3D scene, and finally, placing the 3D object into your 3D scene. We're going to start by creating our 3D object, but before we do that, we need to turn our footage into a fusion clip. So right click on your footage, select new fusion clip and head to the fusion page. Once you're in the fusion page, take a look at the far right section of the toolbar. These are all of the tools you need in order to start working with 3D text and 3D objects. From left to right, you have image plane 3D, shape 3D, text 3D, merge 3D, camera 3D, spotlight, and renderer 3D. And if you click on these tools from left to right, you'll create a node setup that is capable of creating a 3D element. Now, in this case, we're making a 3D shape. So make sure that none of your existing nodes are selected by clicking in any empty area of your node graph. Then in your toolbar, click on shape 3D, followed by merge 3D, camera 3D, spotlight, and renderer 3D. Now, if we look at our node graph, you'll see that we've created a nice little node tree. But if we click on our renderer 3D node and hit two on our keyboard, we'll send our 3D object to the preview monitor and we'll see, well, nothing. Don't freak out, we're going to fix it. The first thing we need to do is choose the shape we want. So let's select our shape 3D node. Then in the inspector, in the shape dropdown box, we'll choose sphere. Now, if we look at our preview monitor, we'll see that our entire viewing area is white. This is because our camera is way too close to our object. To fix this, we'll select our merge 3D node and press one to send it to our left preview monitor. This will allow us to see the position of our shape, camera and spotlight. As we can see, our camera isn't just too close to our object, it's inside of it. So we'll select our camera node and in the inspector, click transform. Then in the translation section, we'll drag the Z wheel to the right until our object is where we want it in the frame. Next, we need to deal with the lighting. If we look at our left preview monitor, we'll see that our light is inside our sphere. So we'll select our spotlight node. Then just like with the camera node, in the inspector, choose transform and adjust the Z translation to the right until the light is outside of the sphere. Then adjust the X and Y translation as well as the X, Y, and Z rotation until your light is roughly in the same position as the sun in your main footage. Now, at this point, you'll see no change to the sphere. That's because we haven't set our 3D object to react to light. To fix this, click on the renderer 3D node, then in the inspector, enable lighting and shadows. Now, if you adjust the position of your spotlight, you'll notice that the lighting on the object has changed. And speaking of our 3D object, let's get that looking the way we want. First, let's click on material and change the diffuse color to black. Now we have a black sphere, but we want to make it look like it's being affected a little bit more by the spotlight. So in the specular tab, we'll adjust the color to match the sun a little bit more and bring down our exponent in order to give our cube a little bit of a shine. We'll be coming back to all of these nodes later in order to make the object match the scene better. But for now, let's move on to creating our 3D environment out of our 2D footage. To do this, we're going to use a camera tracker first. We'll select our media in node hit shift space on our keyboard, search for track, select the camera tracker, 
and click Add. Next, we'll select our Media Out node and press 2 on our keyboard to send it to our right preview monitor. Then, let's select our Camera Tracker node, and in the inspector, we'll check Preview Auto Track Locations. This will allow us to see all of our tracking points. Now, what we want are as many high-quality tracking points as possible. To achieve this, we'll bring our detection threshold up, our minimum feature separation down, and our gutter size up. Then we'll enable bi-directional tracking, which will allow us to track both forwards and backwards through the footage. From there, we'll click auto track and wait for it to complete. Once our footage is done, we need to adjust our camera settings. So let's select camera in the inspector, then we'll put in our focal length and pick our camera from the film gate dropdown box. Now, doing this will automatically adjust our aperture width and height, but if your camera isn't listed in the camera tracker, you have a few options. First, you can try and find a camera in the list with the same sensor or at least the same size sensor as the camera you used. Or if that's not an option, you'll have to Google your camera, find your sensor size, and convert the inches to millimeters. Once our camera settings are dialed in, we can move on to the solve tab in the camera tracker. This is where we are going to get rid of any tracking points that are getting in the way of giving us a good tracking result. First, we'll head into the track filtering system of the solve tab. Then we'll increase our minimum track length and decrease our maximum track error. Next, we'll head to the operations on selected track section, bring down our solve weight to zero, and click set. Doing all of this will highlight all the tracking markers that are getting in the way of getting a good track. Once that's done, click delete and then solve. Now, what we're looking for is an average solve error of less than one. In this case, I haven't quite hit that mark. If you run into the same issue, just continue to tweak your solve settings until you get what you need. You can also delete tracking points manually, but before we do that, let's make our tracking points a little easier to see. First, click on Options. Then in the Visibility section, click the Reprojected Locators and Patterns checkboxes. Now, if we look at our monitor, we can see that our tracking markers are a lot easier to see. If we take a closer look at our footage, we'll see that all of our tracking markers are one of four colors, green, yellow, orange, and red. The green markers are markers that you want to keep. Yellow markers aren't as reliable as green, but they'll work in a pinch. Orange and red, you guessed it, we need to get rid of them because they're messing up our track. So we'll start by selecting all of the red and orange markers and deleting them. Then in our inspector, we'll click solve again. Now, in this case, because of the grass in the scene, we're not going to do much better than 1.13. So we'll just have to move on and hope for the best. But this is a good lesson for those of you doing moving shots that you want to do 3D work with. Use a gimbal. Moving on, our next step is to set our ground plane and our origin point. Doing this will tell DaVinci Resolve where to put our 3D object in our scene and keep it there. To do this, we'll first head to the Export tab and head to Ground Plane Options. Next, we'll change the color to bright pink and select Show in View. This will allow us to see our ground plane so we can adjust our 3D object's position. But before we can actually see our ground plane, we need to add a camera 3D and merge 3D node to our camera tracker. So let's select our camera tracker node, head to our toolbar and select camera 3D followed by merge 3D. Then select your merge 3D node and press one on your keyboard to send it to your left preview monitor. Okay, let's set our ground plane. Let's click on our camera tracker and make sure you're in the export tab. Then expand your 3D scene transform tab and select unaligned. Then select the tracking points that are aligned with the ground in your scene and in the orientation section, click set from selection. Next, we'll select our origin point, which is basically the anchor that will keep our sphere in place. So select a tracking marker that's in the area where you want your sphere to be located Located. Then, in the origin section of the inspector, click set from selection. Then, click export. When we click export, we'll see that we now have a brand new little group of nodes. All of these nodes contain all the tracking and positioning information that will let us complete our scene. So, let's connect everything up. First, we'll disconnect our camera tracker, camera 3D, and merge 3D from between our media in and media out nodes. Then we'll connect our media in to our new camera 3D node created by our export and our camera tracker renderer node to our media out. Finally, we'll connect the merge 3D node from our sphere 
to the Merge 3D node from our tracker export. Now, when you connect everything together, there's a chance that things aren't going to look right. For instance, the screen might turn completely black like it did here. To fix this, we need to figure out why this is happening. So let's select the Merge node that we got with our tracker export and press one to place it in our left preview monitor. What we can see is that the camera for our 3D scene is inside of our sphere. Now, we don't want to move the camera and risk messing up our track, so what we'll do is select our shape, go into the transform tab in our inspector, and drag our Z translation to the left. And now that we can see, let's get everything set up the way we like it. The first thing we need to do is adjust our position, so let's move to the last frame in our composition, then we'll adjust our shape and translation until our sphere is where we want it. Next, we need to adjust the lighting. So let's click on the camera tracker renderer node from our export and enable lighting and shadows. Then we'll adjust our spotlight position until we get the look that we want. And now if we play that back, you'll see that we've added our 3D sphere into our scene. Now I was going to get into using 3D materials in this video, but honestly, We've already covered a lot, so I'll make a new video about that soon. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. But for now, real talk. Yes, 3D can be overwhelming. The whole fusion page can be overwhelming. I get it. So if you're watching this video and you feel like you just jumped out of a plane without a parachute, I've got the perfect video for you. Just click here to check it out. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.